When performing a biopsy, it is essential for the radiologist to plan the biopsy and approach with the radiographer and support staff. It is important to consider the position of the lesion, the shortest distance to the lesion, and positioning of the patient for the optimal approach, as well as the patient and their comfort. It is important to note the distance from the skin to the lesion whilst ensuring the needle remains parallel to the chest wall and remains visible throughout the procedure. This will determine your approach. All the preparation material needs to be prepared in advance. The patient has been counselled and informed of the procedure and has signed consent. The patient is undressed and positioned on the bed in the ultrasound room, considering the desired procedural approach and patient comfort. The skin is cleaned and disinfected. The lesion is localized with the ultrasound probe parallel to the ground in order to visualize the needle tract at all times. Once the lesion is located, anesthetize with lidocaine. Inject the skin superficially and then follow the projected needle track. A small nick is then made in the skin with a surgical blade to allow access. In this case, a coaxial is used to prevent trauma to surrounding tissue, minimize bleeding and keep and maintain the original track. Once at the correct position, proximal to the lesion, remove the sharp trocar. To load the device, pull back twice ensuring the fire ready indicator is completely blue. The first time opens the aperture and the second pullback fully loads the device, ready for fire. You are ready to insert the device through the coaxial. Once in the breast, engage the S button for semi-automatic fire. Once this is confirmed, depress the A button to take the sample. To extract the samples, pull back once to expose the sample notch and extract your sample. Here you see the sample in the open aperture. The marquee we are using is a 12 gauge 10 centimeter at the 25 millimeter sample length option. 
This option provides excellent samples for accurate pathology diagnosis. Another sample is taken without the coaxial for demonstration purposes. Due to the ecogenic tip, it is very clear to position and view under ultrasound. As you will note, the samples are not fragmented and are of great quality which in turn gives excellent and accurate pathology results. We are now ready to place the twirl marker. It is a 17 gauge and is 10 centimeters in length. It is important to ensure both red markings are aligned as it will not deploy should this not be the case. The lesion or area of biopsy is then located and needle inserted. If using the marquee kit, it is recommended to leave the coaxial in place and proceed with the twirl through the coaxial to minimize trauma and place in the correct position. Once in position, fully depress the device to deploy the marker from the needle tip. You will see it deploy into a round shape which hooks into the tissue and minimizes migration allowing for accurate placement. Once deployed, it is best to rotate the device and slowly remove it from the breast after which you can apply compression. After the biopsy is complete, a mammogram is taken to ensure the marker is in place and records are updated appropriately. This ensures that no hematoma or other complications are visible. One of the benefits of this marker is that due to it being made from nitinol, it is clearly visible under X-ray, ultrasound and MRI. Here, imaging using tomosynthesis shows depth of marker and area of biopsy, with the twirl marker beautifully visible in its identifiable round shape. Wound strips and sterilized gauze are placed over the site and protected with surgical tape. The patient is asked to remain seated and relaxed with an ice pack for 10 minutes to continue compression and minimize swelling. A compression bandage can be applied should it be required for 24 hours. All aftercare is explained to the patient in detail. No physical exercise for 24 hours. Some pain or discomfort is expected. Paracetamol is advised as opposed to anti-inflammatories or aspirin. If excessive swelling or bruising occurs, an emergency contact number is supplied to the patient so that the treating physician can immediately be informed. A follow-up appointment is arranged within a week to overview the results.